If you're about to take the BCGKC, aka the chat box interview, you're at the right place. We'll touch on everything from the test basics, interface, question types, and strategies to even the realistic footage. Let's get started. Ever since McKinsey introduced the concept of a testing round before the case interviews, companies like Bain or BCG have been trying to do the same. Each of the big three is constantly trying and rolling new formats with all sorts of naming schemes every once and then, to the point that it's even hard to keep track of them all. So, here's a brief overview so you don't get them confused. You can also use the timestamp to jump straight to the BCG Casey section. The first installment of this testing round in the industry was the McKinsey Problem Solving Test, or PST, which is a paper-based, multiple-choice, and highly stressful exam. McKinsey recently replaced the PST with an interactive assessment format with several names, all referring to the same game. Those names are McKinsey Solve, McKinsey Digital Assessment, Imbellus Game, McKinsey Problem Solving Game, and McKinsey PSG. This whole PSG thing has multiple mini games in it. They are Ecosystem, Plant Defense, or Invasive Species, and Red Rock Study. Bain hasn't seemed to have settled on any format yet. Some of their offices use the Bain Online Test, which is more or less a specialized aptitude test. Meanwhile, some offices in Asia host a very difficult PST test on the HireView platform. It seems to be written by Bain themselves, with a mix of standardized test format and short interviews. Others are even piloting the Test Gorilla platform. BCG is also a confusing one. They traditionally had the BCG Potential Tests, which was a multiple choice test quite similar to the McKinsey PST, except it was done on a computer. BCG is also experimenting with its BCG Pymetrics Test. It's a fun and somewhat silly neuroscience based gaming platform made by the company Pymetrics. In the U.S. offices, this is still being used as part of the resume screening before getting into the BCG Casey round, which is what we're going to be diving into today. The official name for Casey is the BCG Online Case Experience. It's a chatbot-based test with a few case interview-style questions. BCG is not very generous in giving out information about this online case, but piecing together all the information available online, along with the field reports, here's everything we know. Nearly every candidate will be invited to take this assessment. It can be done online from any location where you feel most comfortable. The interface looks like an interactive chatting environment with an AI, but it's just a series of six to seven questions pushed into a chat format. We'll go over the interface and question types later in this video. The time limit will be 25 to 30 minutes, depending on how many questions there are. You will not be able to pause the assessment once it starts, and you will be pressured for time, similar to the BCG Casey simulation. And yes, by the way, we also have a practice simulation for this BCG assessment. Once you're finished chatting with the AI, you'll be prompted to record yourself on camera and deliver your final pitch for the whole case. You'll have 60 seconds to prepare as well as 60 seconds to present. This time is independent of the 30 minutes from the previous section. The case context is typically quite short and straightforward. It's often about a client dealing with some concerning news that's just emerging. The context will be given to you before you're asked any questions. Now, speaking of the questions, there's no better way to learn than by breaking them down into granular types. We'll do it based on both the answer format and the nature of the content. Let's start with the different answer formats you'll encounter. There are four types. The first is the multiple select multiple choice. This is the most popular format in the BCG online assessment, accounting for 40 to 60% of all questions. The format is usually displayed like this. After reading the question, click on see options to pop up all the choices. Some questions, like this one, can have up to 10 choices, so it's going to take up the whole screen. It's nice that there's still a question summary here on the top, but if you need to see the whole question again, just click on the Collapse button here. You can open and close the Choice panel as often as you like. Similarly, in the Choices selection, you can click and unclick the different options as many times as you want. You can also reset your selections by clicking here. The final answer won't be submitted until you click the Done button. Be careful though, because once you click on that, there's no going back. In terms of strategy, notice that in every question that has the multiple select multiple choice format, the question always gives you a clue as to how many choices to select. Sometimes it gives you an exact number like select three best, but sometimes it's just a hint like this one. The next answer format is the single select multiple choice. This is very similar to the multiple select multiple choice, except of course there's only one correct choice. Unlike the previous multiple select type, all options will be shown right in the answer box. You can scroll sideways to see the other options when there's not enough space. Remember, there's only one correct option, and be warned, clicking on any option here immediately submits your answer. There's no going back after that. The third type of answer format are the free form answer types, which can be further broken down as either long text or short text. The long text free form requires you to answer in a paragraph, usually four to six lines long. The user interface for this answer format is pretty straightforward. There is a message box similar to messaging apps with a send icon on the right hand side. 
Just to point out, pressing the Enter key here will not submit the answer, but will add a line break to the paragraph instead, just like if you were typing in Microsoft Word or Google Docs. You won't be able to use special text formats, so hyphens and capitalizations are the best way to emphasize ideas. Even though the text box will allow you to write up to 1500 characters, you really don't need that many. BCG explicitly states that the best answers should be brief and no more than 4 to 6 lines. The short text answer format, on the other hand, only allows you to enter in numbers. It often comes with math questions. Notice that the question always clearly instructs you on rounding or how many decimal places to include. Also, be careful when pressing the enter key into this answer format, as it will submit the answer, and there's no coming back after that. Now, in terms of logic, we can break down any question into four types. For the scope of this video, we'll only touch on the basics. Join the BCG Casey simulation for detailed strategies, explanations, and examples. Every BCG online case starts with a structuring or information question. It goes like this. Which of the following would be most helpful? What statistics about ABC should the team gather? Which piece of information would help BCG move forward with the project, and etc. On the surface, it sounds like a data question, but deep down it requires structuring and drawing an issue tree. As you read through the choice options, try to draw an issue tree roughly based on the options available. Then, select options that collectively cover it the best. Every case also features about two math or quantitative questions. Most of the time, these questions come in short text answer format and occasionally in single select multiple choice type. Nearly all quantitative questions come with an exhibit and roughly about 20 data points, of which about half is just noise. You won't need any accounting or finance knowledge as most of the computations and formulae are quite straightforward. Common calculation logics are along the lines of weighted average, probability, or other compound percentages. Practice with these kinds of math problems will be really helpful. In these quantitative questions, you'll likely know if you've got the right or wrong answer because there's a follow-up on every short text answer format. If you're asked to elaborate on how to get that answer, then you must have got it right. But on the other hand, if the bot prompts you to answer some smaller step calculations, chances are you messed it up on the first try. Moving on to the next type of question, and my personal favorite, which brings back a lot of memories of the good old PSD, the critical thinking and logic questions. An example of this question is like this. Which of the following course of action would likely make you more rich? Pay attention to the wording and notice if there's any qualifier, aka how airtight the logic has to be. The question above can be asked with several different qualifiers, from weak to strong. Which of the following course of action would likely make you more rich? Which of the following course of action would make you more rich? Which of the following course of action would certainly make you more rich? This is important because we would grade each of the answer choices on the following scale. Explicitly confirmed, implicitly confirmed, inconclusive, implicitly rejected, all the way down to explicitly rejected. We would select statements with just the right level on the scale depending on the qualifier. There are a lot of examples and practice questions like this in our KC simulation program. Okay, the last type of questions are the intuition or insights questions. These are the most popular type and unfortunately the hardest ones to get good at. There's no formula or one-size-fits-all strategy to doing them, and it takes a lot of practice to gradually improve. As the name suggests, these questions ask you to come up with, or select from a list, of insights, elements, factors, etc. from a particular context. The insights, elements, or factors can vary a lot. They can be root causes, effects, cost types, solutions, arguments, and so on. In the example context of how to get rich, some examples of intuition or insight questions are, what are some personal expenses that will increase after getting married? What are ways to be more disciplined in saving money? What are some talking points to convince your life partner to spend less on clothing? What are some reasons for the underperforming stock market in the past six months? What are some situations where you would need to use the emergency fund, and etc. Okay, let's take this opportunity to answer some of the most popular questions regarding this assessment. How similar is this compared to an actual case interview? Even though this assessment uses a chatbot to create a feeling of two-way communication, like in the case interviews, it's actually very different from an actual case interview. The case structure and flow are quite similar to an actual case interview, but you should be careful because the response expected from you is going to be very different. In an actual case interview, you're expected to give a full-fledged answer using key substances, elaborate with reasoning, which also have implications for the next step. Basically, the response you give should be so insightful that it leaves behind no confusion, prompts no follow-up questions, and everybody is perfectly satisfied. But in this chatbot assessment, BCG suggests your response should be stripped down to the bare minimum, only the punchline without any explanation, reasoning, or elaboration. Logistically, this is to make their expensive evaluation process quicker and more efficient. Fine, but remember not to carry this style into an actual case interview. How difficult are the questions compared to that of other assessments? 
Difficult is a subjective term. Let's make it more objective by going to the granular level. In terms of time pressure, this BCG online case is among the most difficult. In terms of numerical reasoning, this assessment is about the average. On the verbal reasoning, aka the ability to process text format data and draw direct conclusions explicitly stated by the data, the BCG case is also on the average. On logic and structuring, aka the ability to draw conclusions and implications not directly stated in the data provided, as well as creating and processing abstract concepts and structures, such as diagrams or issue trees, the BCG online case is extremely difficult. It's also the most difficult in terms of business intuition. And finally, interface complexity is on the more difficult side of the spectrum. It can be scary not knowing which button would officially submit your answer, but that can be learned quickly with some practice. Are these real screen captures from BCG? No, the footage is from the Casey simulation, which we developed at M Consulting Prep. Customers have said that the interface and case flow are very similar to the actual experience of BCG. Try it for yourself with some actual practice on a realistic interface. Use the link below for instant access. As of now, who has to take this BCG Casey assessment? All applicants to the consulting track have to take this assessment. Like I said earlier, even though some US offices use the BCG Pymetrics test, it's still just a pre-screening round together with a resume. US candidates still need to take the BCG Casey assessment afterward before being passed to the case interview round. And that's it. Thank you for sticking with it till the end. Leave a comment below on whatever questions you may have. Many fellow candidates and myself will be there to give you as many insights as possible. At M Consulting Prep, we believe everybody can pass the Casey assessment. You just have to believe it yourself.